like it, download the fence. Thank you so much for stopping back by the channel. We're gonna go over my six Rattler today in 300 Blackout. I've got some extras. We've done a lot of upgrades to it. This is first and foremost, a free and clear firearm. So safety first, uh, guys, I'll see you up at the table. We're gonna break it down piece by piece, go over what components I've changed, why I've changed them. It's gonna be a good one. This is a cool gun. Guys, I'll see you in a minute. I'm like down the fence. Guys, Mike at Download Defense, thank you so much for stopping back by the channel. We are going to go over my six hour MCX Rattler. Um, it's chambered in 300 blackout, but I do have, I got a little surprise for you here, a little bit down the line. So hang in there. Um, so if you saw my MPX video, the SIG MPXK that I have, uh, you're going to see some similarities here. I bought both of these guns at the same time as well as the Banish 46 suppressor and I bought them both to be run suppressed so the suppressor took a lot longer to come in than than expected so um and before we before we go any further this is still still a, a clear and safe firearm so um it, the mag is in there for show I got it, it it's all emptied out I'm at the office here this evening so um I've got different brace options for it. You know, with all this this brace stuff going on, I don't I don't know what's going to happen. But um, this is the PDW brace, and it's it's the one from from uh, SP Tactical. SP Tactical makes great braces. Um, you know, I wish them the best. I don't. Who knows what's going to happen? But we're not going to get political here. So. Um, we're keeping it fun and about the guns. Uh, Flatline Fiberco strap, um, the, the pistol brace straps. Uh, again, I, I run them on everything. This is the M MPX behind me here. Um, all of my pistol braces have the Flatline fiber straps on them. They, they just hold up well. They're, they're really rigid. Um, and some of the flimsier uh, pistol braces, it, it seems to seems to firm them up just a just a bit. So, um, sling, T-Rex arms, and you know, for the sake of my sanity, I'm gonna actually take this off for the rest of the video. Oh, okay. Let's get to the meat and potatoes here. Um, so, Radian Raptor charging handle. A lot of their their items are, are proprietary and, and the charger handle is one um, a lot like the like the MPX I it took me a long time to find this charging handle and I, I had to pay dearly for it when I did um, I changed out the the uh, ejection port cover to the new mag poles I, I like them they they did or no I'm sorry this one has the strike industries on it I, I have the mag poles on most of my other stuff um radiant talon 45 safeties the ambi 90 slash 45s again like i said i run the i run the bigger lever on the on the left side and uh the little nubby one over here so um this gun really hasn't even been shot that much it's really not it's not even broke in as far as i'm concerned uh it is set up ambidextrous so it, like i like i mentioned in my my mpx video i I run it, I, I don't run ambi controls, um, and I do it because I don't want to confuse myself if I'm, if I'm going back and forth from the, the SIG platforms to just a regular direct impingement. And uh, it just, it, it's just part of my consistency. It's part of my training. It's part of how I do things and how I, how I ingrain that muscle memory, which is extremely important. Um, especially in high stress situations. So 
Trigger Tech trigger. This is an adjustable, um, and you know I bought this this trigger before I picked the gun up. Uh, the Geisleys are crazy. Usually I run Geisleys and everything, and I couldn't find the Geisley was out of stock. If for some reason I felt like I needed to change the trigger on it just for the sake of changing the trigger, and the stock trigger actually ended up being pretty pretty decent. So. Had I known that the, the stock trigger was going to be as good as it was, I, I wouldn't have spent the, I think this thing was 280 bucks um, for this trigger. Now, it, it is nice. It's, it's crispy. It's, it's different than, I, I run the three guns, um, the, the flat bow, Geisley SD3 guns on just about everything. And, uh, you know, that's kind of a hybrid trigger. It's, it's in between a, a two stage and a, and a single stage. So, you know, it's, it's a, it's a strange trigger. I get, you can get used to it and then go into something like a pure single stage or a, or a pure, uh, true two stage after coming off of that three gun, you know, you can get yourself choked up a little bit, but um, you get, you, you can, you can usually survive and, and get around it. Um, Arasaka finger trail up front, finger stop. Uh, it, just like I said in the, in the MPX video, I mean, that's for, for reference. Uh, I don't want to ever be in a situation where on these shorter guns, you can get out when you get used to running the longer stuff. If you're, if you're working on different, different guns that day, you don't want to get yourself in a situation where if you're running it unsuppressed, you're getting out in front of the barrel and, um, you know, blowing your finger off. Or, you know, if you're running it suppressed, the suppressors do get do get heated up pretty good. So um, we're running the Hollison with the ACS reticle in it, and that's a really cool reticle. Uh, it's, this is a bag gun as well, and, and you'll see some kind of pictures and I'm going to do a full breakdown on, on the bags that both this and the MCX ride in, uh, and you're going to like them. They're both packed out pretty good uh, with all kinds of goodies. So um, as far as extras, so aside from, from that, you know, unity mount, um, we start getting into the modularity of this gun. And... Uh, I don't have this timed or anything. It's I, I was running a suppressor on it, but I do have the Calex kit. So what this does is you pop off your your front pin, um, the handguard comes off. It, there's two T25s, I believe, behind there that hold the barrel in, and you pop the whole barrel and piston assembly out. You pop this in. You do have to change handguards, of course. So uh, this is a Midwest Industries. This gun's Cerakoted in tungsten. Uh, I personally did it, and when I did it, uh, I made sure that I did both the the uh, Midwest Industries for the 5.56 and the stock one. So uh, they turned out pretty good. But the the Calex kit is cool. I have run it. You know, 5.56 in this short of a barrel, you, you can't run it suppressed. The, this is pinned and welded. The the muzzle device. It's, it's a little short for that with, with that hot of a round, um, just from, in my opinion, and take it for what it's worth. But it is a, it, you know, for training purposes, when 300 blackout gets, gets really expensive and gets tough to find, which we have had, you know, times when it was, then this is a good way to be able to continue to run your, run your gun and, you know, get your reps in on, on that, on that same platform. So it's, you know, the modularity again, like I said, in the MC or the MPX video is, is just amazing on these. And you do have a, a, uh, adjustable front, um, setting here for, for running it suppressed and unsuppressed. You do have to oil that every now and then you want to work that. Don't, don't let that sit. Um, that will get, that will get jammed up if you, if you let it get all carbon locked up. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to break down the internals of this gun and we're going to compare it to a stock M4 so that you can kind of see what, what this short stroke piston system uh, that, that SIG developed is, is about next to a, a direct impingement setup. So 
let's go ahead and uh, we're gonna switch up the angle here. I'm gonna get you on the table and let you let you take a peek at, at uh, you know how this comes apart. And I'm gonna show you the internals and we're gonna go over some of the specifications here. So I'll see you in a second. 